Good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick. Today is Wednesday. It is the 21st day of September. We're continuing with 1 Timothy, and today we're in chapter 4. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons, through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. If you put these things before the brothers, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourselves for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promises for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. For to this end we toll and strive, we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy, when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things, immerse yourself in them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so you will save both yourself and your hearers. Okay, so more instructions here for Timothy today. And you can see that Paul is starting out and he is addressing something that was common to that time that was an error. And this was an obsession with the law. So he starts out by talking about that there are those out there in Christian circles who are requiring abstinence from certain foods and are forbidding marriage. And some of this may have been held over from Judaism, which practiced a lot of uh, abstinence from certain foods. But as we may remember from Acts chapter 10, when God lets down the cloth full of unclean animals and tells Peter to kill and eat, Peter says, no, Lord, that he has never eaten anything unclean. And then God responds, or Jesus responds, um, let nothing um, that, that God has created be considered unclean. And, and that same mindset is expressed here in chapter 4, because in verse 4 it says, For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. So we remember that when God made everything in the initial days of creation, he pronounced everything as good. And for us as believers in Christ, that goodness is now restored through the work of Jesus, that uh, we no longer need to be concerned about unclean foods, unclean people, if you will, um, unclean situations, uh, or, or purifying ourselves, but that Christ has done away with all of those demands of the law, and, you know, to, to go back and to insist on them now would be to counteract the gospel, because the gospel says that we have freedom in Christ, that we have been forgiven our sins. The law enslaves and makes us to do things that um, or, or made us to do things that were under obligation and under commandment and, and things of the like. And now that has been um, fulfilled by Christ. So to insist on these things now is to, like I said, contradict the gospel and even to teach something contrary to the gospel and that you can't now come along and insist on people obeying certain laws and making their salvation dependent on it, or now you've moved into works righteousness and now you've uh, lost the gospel altogether. But there's a lot of reprimand in here for certain teachings that are contrary, because the gospel is so centrally important, and it is the most important thing when it comes to salvation, that people, if they get sucked into this and they start believing that they need to do certain things, um, avoid marriage, uh, beat their flesh, uh, avoid certain foods, uh, keep certain feast days, circumcise, 
uh, anything, and even if it's not a Jewish-related thing, but it's some other law that, that people are imposing, which is really why we say that the Christianity is the only other religion of gospel. You know, all the other religions demand that you follow a certain set of laws in order to be saved or to find a path to whatever God they are preaching. Islam has its five pillars. Buddhism has its eightfold path of enlightenment. Hinduism has reincarnation with an emphasis on how you behaved in this life. Christianity says God comes to you in the person of Jesus uh, and dies on the cross for your sin, forgives you all your sin, and even bestows on you through the Holy Spirit the faith to believe in him. So there is no demand for works. There is no demand for keeping laws, uh, beating your flesh. Uh, Now, we do have a sense of walking in the commandments of God, because we have been redeemed, and and these are marks of God's people, but we don't do them to be saved, and we don't do them to try and curry favor with God. They're just characteristics of us now, because we have been given a new nature in Christ. So, this is the constant Lutheran dynamic that we talk about all the time, known as law and gospel, and Paul is doing that today with Timothy, as he is encouraging him um, to be a pastor, and to be an evangelist, and to uh, maintain the doctrines and the beliefs of the church so that people will hear the good news of Jesus and be saved. Okay, let's continue now as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Okay, so you may now start to bring items over for the garage sale. Uh, Someone will be up here until, I believe, around... 8 o'clock this evening. So if you want to bring the items over, you can surely do that. And then tomorrow morning, I may not be in until noon. So if uh, you want, you can bring items over, um, preferably sometime after 1 p.m. tomorrow, um, just to make sure that we have coverage here. And, you know, 1 to 5 tomorrow. Um, There is grief share happening tomorrow night, but uh, we we don't want items brought over then because Mary's going to be teaching or, or leading. Anytime Friday is good, probably from nine in the morning till evening time. If you're in doubt, you can call up to the church or you can email. Um, you know, I would suggest emailing both Deaconess Elizabeth and I at the same time, not either or, but both. And uh, we do have some items being arranged for pickup. We really need some volunteers to help us out Friday and to price items and to bring them in from the shed to the main building. Um, A couple of us are going to be going out and picking up items from some of your homes. If you have a way to get those items up here, it would be a big help to us. And then Saturday morning, we need volunteers between 6 and 6.30 to to carry the items out. And then around 2 o'clock to load them up into the Goodwill trailer, the ones that don't sell. So um, we also may be looking for someone to cook hot dogs on uh, Saturday for lunch. Uh, Gerald has had some surgery and is not recovering as speedily as he had hoped, so we may need some help in that area as well. That's all the announcements I have. God bless this the rest of your Wednesday, and I will see you again tomorrow for more Daily Devotions.